Our next speaker, we have Mr. Daniel O, oh, the Senior Principal Technical Marketing Manager from Red Hat. Daniel O oh is a Senior Principal Technical Marketing Manager at Red Hat, a well-known public speaker, open source contributor, published author, and developed advocate. He has more than 20 plus years of first-hand experience in solving real-world enterprise problems in production environments using cloud-native technologies such as Quarkus, Spring Boot, Node.js, and Kubernetes. He's also a cloud-native computing foundation ambassador and DevOps Institute ambassador for developers and operators in terms of developing cloud-native microservices, designing serverless functions, and deploying them to multi and hybrid clouds in flexible, easy to use, cost-effective, open and collaborative ways. Well, his topic for today is serverless functions, accelerating DevOps adoption. Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are, and welcome to DevOps India Summit 2021. And my name is Daniel O. Oh, and once again, thanks for joining Serverless Functions Accelerating DevOps Adoption Topic. Let's get started. Uh, just a quick introduction, uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Daniel O. Oh. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major, which means I spend a lot of time with the developers and SRE and DevOps engineers. Uh, in order to build a hybrid cloud and a multi-cloud with a lot of open source projects, but also Red Hat technology. Not just a solution offering, but also I'm really more happy to address their uh, business and technical issue and concern with the agile and DevOps practices. I'm also responsible for CNCF and DevOps Institute's ambassador. Uh, really give me a good chance to uh, have a relation with a lot of smart people around the world uh, like you and then uh, DevOps practices also uh, build a cloud every application. Okay, here are just three um, contact points if you are interested in my specialty or some kind of technical or even non-technical question to me. Uh, the first recommendation, follow my Twitter. Uh, you can send me any uh, question and also here is my YouTube channel. You, can, uh, you are more than uh, welcome to uh, subscribe to my channel. There are a bunch of uh, technical, even non-technical uh, video demos. And here's my Giri Proctory, Daniel 030. Uh, you can pork and copy uh, whatever you need. You can find the last of example, uh, how to build a microservice cloud and DevOps platform, etc. All right. So uh, before we get started to talk about today's topic, let's uh, one step back and think about why we need to adopt serverless or people really happy with the uh, monolithic application or a traditional Microsoft application with their business requirements. But a lot of people uh, got started with the talking about serverless function. It actually uh, began uh, six or seven years ago, actually 2014, Amazon Lambda unleashed upon the world to provide uh, at the first serverless uh, runtime for many developers. But this was not just a one-time event because after that, uh, the lot of vendors and the cloud provider companies jumped into the, the uh, market and provide the same capability and features around the serverless functions. So for example, Microsoft and IBM and Google, and the recently uh, Kubernetes de facto infrastructure for immutable infrastructure like a, a container runtime, also provide the K-native project, which allows developer and DevOps team build, deploy, manage their Microsoft application as serverless function behaviors. So this is the, 100% uh, totally proof, proof and evidence of why we need to think about serverless at this moment. So the next question is, I guess, and I think where, where we can get started uh, this serverless 
and then what kind of solution, what framework, what platforms uh, we can adopt to build our own serverless landscape or architecture. So luckily, uh, you can navigate uh, CNCF serverless landscape. As you can see, there are lots of open source projects, even uh, providers by cloud provider solution or services. As an example, you can find uh, Knative here and the Kater is some event-driven uh, uh, the uh, serverless uh, platform and also Amazon Lambda and serverless.com and also security uh, software uh, also here. So maybe you think about, oh, wow, this is really awesome because the, uh, if you, you just only uh, two or three choices to adopt serverless architecture, just like I already mentioned earlier, maybe uh, five or six years ago, but there's two uh, small choices for you because you're a little bit uh, around the locking technology, something like that. But now we got a lot of choices, but this is not always good for you because if you were uh, some of a person that can make a decision like a CTO or uh, develop a team lead or a DevOps engineer uh, team leader. So for that, it will be too many choices because you maybe spend a lot of time, maybe six months uh, to figure out which framework, which technology will be appropriate to your business requirement, business domain or specific uh, architecture. So that's why we need something different, make it better, make it faster and make it also uh, leverage uh, developer and operation team at the same time, not just only focusing on developer, not just only focusing on operation team. This is a, we need to something different way. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Quarkus. Uh, Quarkus is a just simply say Java framework, but not just a traditional Java stack. It's a little bit more focused on 100% Kubernetes. So if you want to develop a uh, microservices like a cloud neighbor microservices or a serverless function, and then eventually programming on Kubernetes, uh, the Quarkus is your best choice, uh, I can say that. And also uh, I'm gonna showcase how Quarkus is capable of uh, delivering and developing your cloud neighbor microservice application for serverless function, specifically a developer standpoint, but also how to manage your standard function environment or cloud every environment with the Quarkus on Kubernetes cluster. So I'm, I just wanted to stop uh, the talking and sharing my boring slideware. So let's uh, get into the demo, how it works. It's just the more interesting and the fun stuff. So I'm going to stop uh, my sharing presentation mode. And then here's my local environment. So I just get just a black uh, terminal window, and then there's nothing in here. So there are several ways uh, to uh, create your microservice project. Like uh, you can go to uh, project generator site. Like uh, for example, when you go to uh, web, open the web browser and quarks.io is a new official page and then you can go to start coding and then uh, this is your project generator. You can uh, change your group name and artifact ID or build tool like a Gradle, uh, Maven. If you are a developer, you are really familiar with this uh, packaging tool. And you can add a lot of your uh, business capability. For example, I need to create a new uh, application which uh, needed to integrate the backend messaging server, for example, Kafka. And then you can find it here, uh, just search Kafka and there are a lot of Kafka uh, extension. You can just select one and then just generate your application, which uh, will download the zip file. And then you just unzip and then uh, you just keep adding your business logic. And also uh, there are some Quarkus CLI tool, like a Quarkus, Quarkus CLI tool, uh, something like that and create, you can have one, and then you can uh, actually, this is a simple uh, JavaScript based command line tool. Uh, you can 
uh, create a project and a build application and deploy and you can edit it any extension as you see the Kafka integration or function integration or the messaging integration. There are a lot of stuff you can actually do that by CLI. So the, what I wanted to say here for developer perspectives, there are uh, multiple way which he really, really uh, familiar with the developer uh, the daily life. So some of the developer are familiar with the uh, CLI command line interface to uh, develop the application. You can go with that. So some of the developer are just starting from the web browser or some of the developer uh, get started with the application development with the ID tool like a VS Code or IntelliJ or Eclipse. You can get started with the Quarkus application development uh, with that tools. So, and then today I'm going to use uh, one of the CLI from Kubernetes. The Kubernetes uh, Knative project actually provide one of the nice tool uh, the called uh, KN, the Knative is a short name. The KN is a new command line to create your serverless function and deploy to a, a Kubernetes cluster. And then we actually Red Hat uh, build new project like a name is a funk. And then we put in the dead functionality into KN command line. So as you see the KN funk, it's a new command line. And then with this command line, you can create a project, you can build an application, and you can deploy the application to Kubernetes cluster as a serverless function. Pretty awesome. And also the function command line actually uh, separately install and download from uh, Git repository. So today I'm gonna use a fun command line, which is a really more latest one, because there are some uh, three and four weeks to integrate latest version to KN uh, command line. So today I'm going to use the laser funk command line. So first of all, I'm going to create a new project, uh, such as a Quarkus, let's say Quarkus funk, and then you can specify which runtime you're going to use that. I'm going to use a Quarkus. So once I just uh, run this one command line, and then your function name Quarkus funk, and the runtime Quarkus and uh, trigger HTTP. But actually, uh, when you uh, find out your uh, option here, you can have a multiple runtime. You can choose that as you see. So here we go. So you can use Golang or Node.js and Python and uh, another Java uh, runtime. It's a Spring Boot. So there are multiple uh, choices you can actually uh, create your function project. This is a really good benefit for developer and enterprise companies so because some of the company, we have a lot of Spring developer. We have a lot of Java developer. We have only Node.js developer. And for that, uh, this command line uh, address the uh, business circumstances as well. Okay. So let's try to change the directory to the right one. Here you go. And then if you are developers and then you are very familiar with this uh, file directory. So this is a Maven uh, Java project or uh, also generate. So you can actually use any command, any ID tool like uh, uh, VS Code and IntelliJ or a BI editor and then just prepare your tool. You can just run up. And then what's interesting is uh, the main different main difference between the normal Java project with this uh, generated project. So there are one YAML file is generated during the scaffolding this project is called a funk YAML file. This YAML file allows the developer to build the application as a serverless function and then uh, deploy to Kubernetes. As you see the function name we uh, specify in command line and the runtime corpus and then trigger an HTTP protocol, you can actually trigger this function by cloud event, like an event-driven application, like an integrated Kafka backend server or something like that. And then you can uh, make a choice uh, builder. So by default, we're gonna deploy this application running on JVM on the runtime of a Java technology stack. But also Quarkus allows developer to have uh, native compilation, which means you don't need to JVM machine to run your Java application, even serverless, they are super fast. And then for example, uh, one sample application like a RESTful API application 
takes uh, one second to start up, but with a native compilation, native executable file, like a Go, Python, the other language, it takes uh, normally a uh, 10 millisecond. It's uh, maybe a uh, hundred times faster than uh, traditional microservices. So just imagine that one of the big concern of serverless, like uh, Amazon Lambda, is cold start. So the, the application normally scale down to zero or hibernated, which means there's no running services at this moment. And then when you got uh, some network traffic, like uh, incoming network traffic to that application, like a sub uh, application on Amazon Lambda, and their application will go up like a uh, starting and take some time, maybe five seconds or even uh, six seconds to start up. But this is uh, the cold start mechanism, but some enterprise company uh, feel uh, really have a concern about that because the end user experience perspective, they feel like uh, the application latency. So click on web browser, I need to see the next page in one second, but actually it takes uh, three seconds to start up. So just imagine the same application, you need to take three seconds, but with, uh, with native compilation, that application start up 30 milliseconds, which means an user even uh, doesn't recognize this application actually already scaled down to zero. They don't feel a uh, cold start uh, issue any longer. Anyway, so this is a one funk YAML file. I'm not gonna uh, uh, drive in more detail, like a technical stuff, okay? And then the uh, there was application also generated like a, a sample application, uh, like a just uh, hello world, like an input message, uh, just uh, JSON file, like a hello world, something like that, and output here. So one of the very interesting stuff here is just one funk annotation. This annotation makes your traditional microservices as a function. This is a really good benefit of uh, Quarkus for developers. They don't need to worry about uh, uh, to figure it out Amazon Lambda or Kubernetes API, just this one single annotation, uh, make it happen automatically for developer. Okay, so next step is I'm gonna build and deploy application to Kubernetes. But for that, let me try to run this application uh, for locally, because I need to make sure this application working on my local machine before I deploy the application to production environment, such as Kubernetes. I just run the Maven uh, command line or Quarkus CLI. So once your application running here, and then oh, I'm gonna switch it under the terminal window and then try to access endpoint uh, default 8080 and then uh, the just try to do that and the message you know, which means uh, there's an, uh, I'm not, I didn't uh, pass down any uh, message. So let's try to add one message here. Uh, key is message and value, uh, something like welcome, DevOps India, Summit 2021. Okay. One space. All right, so message welcome, DevOps India Summit 2021. So the application is totally working. So next step, I'm gonna build this application, like uh, the job file and then packaging like a container image and deploy to Kubernetes cluster. So I'm gonna stop runtime here. So next step, I'm gonna ju just deploy. And to do that, actually I needed to uh, local container environment, my, for example, Docker. It takes a, a minute to start up, all right. And uh, I needed to specify uh, the container registry here. So as part of the process to build and deploy application, the first of all, packaging application, and the second one, uh, 
the containerized application and push this containerized image to external container registry, such as Quay.io or the Docker Hub. I'm going to use Quay.io today. Daniel O, my username. And then I'm going to specify uh, the Kubernetes namespace, Quarkus. You can actually anyone do that, and I'm going to put it in the bubbles. All right. So here is my Kubernetes cluster, which is OpenShift uh, container platform based on Kubernetes. As you see, so here is a Quarkus dev namespace. There's a nothing here. And then let me try to change the Quarkus developer uh, namespace. So I'm going to run it. Uh, oh, yeah, typo namespace here. OK, so first of all, the pulling uh, builder image, like uh, the JVM builder image. And then behind the scene, we're going to use the build pack. The build pack is one of the CNCF project uh, to allow the developer to build application itself and then uh, containerize it like a container uh, runtime, like a uh, OCI format or Docker, and then uh, push it to image it to external container registry. So you just need to uh, run one single command line. And as you see, here's the uh, application packaging uh, logs, like a Maven command line. And then at once application builds success, we're going to uh, package this application like a Docker file or something like that and push it to container registry. And then the last thing is deploy to container platform. As you see, here is a new uh, endpoint how to access your Kubernetes uh, serverless application. Back to the here, now your new application just deploy here. And then when you go to a low file, you can have Quarkus and then you version. And then here we go, we, you just need to uh, set 0.7 seconds to start this application based on JVM. When you change this enable compilation, it takes us pretty fast, okay? And let's try to access the application endpoint here. So I'm gonna change that URL uh, from local, local to uh, my cloud and I'll change that uh, with the workers. Yeah, change the message. Let's give me one second to uh, scale the town, uh, the application to Kubernetes. So by default compilation on Kubernetes K native is uh, for scale down to zero. If you have any network traffic, that application part will be down in 30 seconds. So in the meantime, it's already uh, starting to terminating and it takes a little bit more longer because uh, the Kubernetes uh, try to check in any uh, network traffic train uh, occur in the meantime. So for example, uh, after 30 seconds, okay, there's no um, network traffic, and not, but not gonna try to stop it uh, immediately because it's still uh, try to uh, network traffic train. Okay, we just uh, uh, scaled it down to zero. As you see, there's no dark set, no, no pile. So, Auto scale to zero, you can find that. And back to the terminal and then try to fire up the endpoint and back to the browser and then your application automatically start a container creating and running on and back to the here. So you got all the welcome to uh, DevOps India Summit 2021 with the purpose. So pretty awesome. It takes uh, maybe uh, less than one second. So let's try to uh, change this uh, label. We're gonna deploy the one more application today, like an app. I'll push IO and runtime equal core curse. Okay, we got a, a new icon. And another thing is here, when you go to the Funko YAML file, as you see, uh, the, uh, the image image digest is automatically changed there during the build and deploy process. Let's try to this application one more time with the native comparison to compare the startup time. So change the uh, function name, uh, make it distinguish it, and then uh, change the uh, image name here. And also we're gonna uh, use default native here. That's it. I'm even not gonna change any application code here. And back to the terminal window. And then one more time. And 
and this application. It takes a little bit longer than our previous one because the native compilation uh, needs to package all dependency and library, just like a packaging container image. In the meantime, we're gonna try to, another interesting stuff uh, to care about the operation tip because we showcase the how the developer to build the serverless function on Kubernetes with just simple two command line. I just using uh, first command line, just create the project, the second command line to deploy application. But in the meantime, you can actually change your application code. Today, I just changed the code like uh, uh, the output message, but you actually put the, any application business logic into your application project. But in the end, you just needed to run two command line. One is uh, create a project, the other one is deploy. Deploy already have a build uh, capability as well. So let's go back to uh, Kubernetes like OpenShift and change it to another project, uh, Ops, uh, Quarkus. Here we go. This is a Quarkus Ops project. And then as you see, there's nothing in here. So maybe you heard about HAM. So HAM is the new uh, packaging um, tool to your standard runtime for Kubernetes. So for operation uh, perspective, they need to stand the runtime to deploy application, even though with the Quarkus or Java stack. So luckily there are ham chart menu in a push. You can actually come around as well. You know, find the Quarkus one here and you create a ham chart. And then uh, you can uh, define a lot of stuff. Uh, as you see, here's a build and then uh, and a native compilation and deploy specification, et cetera. So I just need to make it simple today uh, to understand uh, better easily. So just a build application from one of my uh, project from Git repo. And then here's a reference to branchy. And also here's a deep, deploy strategy like a readiness to liveness on Kubernetes capability, but I just uh, leave it uh, as empty and just install. Once you install the ham chart, this is the standard application. Just like imagine that uh, in, a, in the past, you just install like a standard web server or uh, the uh, application server. So it takes a little bit uh, some time and then click on the build. And then uh, this is just first step that uh, clone the application from here and then uh, packaging application, something like the widget in the local environment, all right? So back to the terminal window, uh, it takes a little bit longer uh, because the, you know what, uh, the, the native compilation by default using GraalVM, uh, which allows you have a super fast and a, a tiny memory footprint to start up. In order to do that, you need to put all dependency library, uh, which the application needs to run and start up. So this is the, uh, the process to uh, uh, finish the uh, good process, uh, finish the process uh, to uh, eliminate the unnecessary code and uh, uh, the optimize your application for executable file. All right, uh, back to the here, uh, the application is just still uh, packaging application, but when you go to topology view, uh, you can find here, Maybe uh, you gotta find an uh, image pull uh, back off error, but you don't need to worry about that. When you go to ham chart and then go to ham and release note, you can find the notification image full error or image pull back off error uh, because the still bill is the are uh, working on it. So once your bill application finish, uh, the error message will be gone. In the meantime, you can find the error log, uh, the build log here. You can actually go to build menu and here's the build and it's still running. Go back to here and then uh, logs here. So almost done and the packaging application and then we already packaging this application as a containerized and then push it to container imaging into uh, one of the internal registry in Kubernetes or push the container platform. And then uh, the finally the application uh, try to get started. As you see, the application is now running. Just it. And just make sure application still uh, running here. So you, you can see application running. 
and then the uh, end the point automatically created. And I go to here, here's my to do application, like a CRUD uh, 3BX transaction application. So, what you need to do today, uh, I'm going to need to uh, showcase a nice demo at the OIS and also uh, presentation. So, just like that, I just almost then I just checked this one and I uh, compared this one. So this is totally working my application. And after that, uh, you can actually add a new uh, uh, configuration. For example, as you see, there has to check missing on the application, but developer actually doesn't care about this one. Only operation team care about your application health. Is this application really working? Is this application really startup? So in order to that, uh, the, uh, this is really cool stuff in the ham chart. You can go back to ham menu and then change your ham, click on that. And then actually cl click on update. Here we go and upgrade your ham. And then you can actually uh, change the YAML file. And then you don't have any uh, liveness and readiness. And we just added the liveness and readiness to a specific endpoint and upgrade it. And then it takes uh, uh, just a few seconds to complete because automatically change the application. And after that, the developer just deployed uh, the specific application into the standard runtime. Change the Git repository and the automatically triggering the application change into this application. So the operation team uh, provide the standard runtime for your application development, just like a DevOps adoption. And then go back to top project view, and then click on resource, and the URL has check is gone. So when you click on here, has check, you can find the readiness probe edited and the library's probe edited automatically, just like we uh, specified the endpoint here. Pretty good. And now let's go back to our uh, developer project here and top project view. And then you are the, here the endpoint is already done. Uh, the dev comparison, let's try to uh, access endpoint here. So this is a new endpoint. And then change the terminal window. And uh, try to print the, the new endpoint. And then uh, try to message it uh, like a Quarkus native here. And then go back to window and then your application automatically start up really fast. And then click and bureau. And now you just need to a millisecond and native. So previously we just uh, 0.7 second, but here is a millisecond, so maybe hundred times faster than uh, previous application, even though the same application, pretty awesome. Okay, I'm just done the demo. We are running out of time. I just uh, wrap up uh, real quick. So we did the quarters uh, for Kubernetes and OpenShift for your DevOps adoption. I uh, actually this open source technology uh, care about your developer and also operation team with a, just two step and uh, make it change your DevOps practice as well. Uh, just like I can show the ham chart and the, there are a lot of uh, technical video. Uh, uh, the Bini URL, Bini slash Daniel TV is my YouTube channel. I just put in the lots of uh, DevOps practices and uh, serverless application development and traditional application development, you know, just please subscribe to the channel and find any valuable video. And just let me know if you have any, any concern or question around the technical uh, videos and non-technical tips as well. All right, if you are really more into uh, Quarkus stuff for your next uh, cloud native journey or DevOps journey, here's an interesting asset. For example, I already showcased the code.quarkus.io is a project generator web page. And here's a bini URL, bini slash try dash quarkus. It's a hundred percent self-learning service portal. Uh, you can have a uh, lots of uh, running courses, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes each course, uh, just using a uh, web browser. And here's the uh, IDC performance lab validation. You can find out, you can download this uh, file for free and uh, figure it out. Uh, compared to traditional application like a Swing Boot versus Quarkus, the performance perspective. All right, that's it. Uh, that's all I have I wanted to share today. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, I hopefully you enjoy the rest of uh, 
uh, DevOps in the Assembly. Thanks all. Have a good rest of the day.